Welcome back, super creators. Today we're talking about references. And no, I will not be saying things like, oh, don't copy the reference exactly. Find unique images. Yeah, obviously, like, everybody says that, but I want to go deeper. I want to go behind the mindset of references. It might seem like a weird idea at first, but I promise it is worth the watch because honestly, when I first learned about it from my professor in school, it kind of changed my life. So I hope you get that as well. So for this video, I'm going to talk about two different things. Number one is where do you find your references? And that one's super easy, very quick answer. And then the number two is the one mistake that you might be making without even recognizing it and how much better your work will be when you start recognizing it if it makes any sense. Anyway, let's dive right in. Where do you find your references? If you watched any of my other videos, you probably already know that I am against stealing images <laughs> from Pinterest or Google images or Instagram or whatever. Yes, you can use those images and then you can post them when you tag the model, tag the photographer, give all the credit you can give, but still that work that you created is a derivative work right? So yes, I can post it on Instagram and I can share how awesome it is and I can tag the artist and they might even love it. But at the end of the day, I don't really have the rights to sell it without their permission. I can't sell prints or whatever. Yes, some artists still do. They don't get caught. Everything's fine. And some of them actually do reach out to the photographer or the model and they get their permission, which is great. But if you do get caught doing that, it's just bad rap from the creator of the original image and just in general, come on, like it's not your work entirely, right? So let's be nice about it. Let's be good artists and maybe I'll get some hate comments about it in the comment section. If you do have a hate comment, leave it. I love them because at the end of the day, you guys, I just want to, I want artists to realize something that I haven't realized before, which was when I was just getting started. I thought, wow, well, I drew that. I changed the hair color. I did something, something, right? And I thought it was okay because, well, I drew it, right? I put in all this effort, all these hours, all this whatever, and I'm not even that good at drawing, so it kind of looks like a worse version of the photograph. At the end of the day, it's still somebody else's work. How would you like to create a drawing and then some artist draws that drawing and says, well, I did it a different way and I put all the effort, now it's mine. You wouldn't like that, would you? So the same goes for photographers and other creators. I still take photos from Instagram models and I still draw them. And then I make sure to tag them. But I'm not really selling that work because again, it's not my work to sell. Wow, that was a long talk. But I could talk about it for hours and I won't because I don't want to bore you. But okay, so where do you find references then? Well, there are these beautiful, amazing, incredible websites that I'm in love with because they provide copyright free Photographs, what does that mean? That means an artist said, hey, I took this photograph, I love it, but I don't want any rights to it. So if you want it, you can have it and use it for your work. You can paint from it, sell that work, I don't care, you don't need to let me know. That's kind of like the basic idea, but I will leave a link down in the description that explains it a little bit differently if you want to read that. So yeah, I use these all the time. It's like Pixabay, Unsplash, Pexels, and many, many others, but they're all from creators who said, hey, it's fine. Like, I don't mind that you're gonna use it and you can do whatever you want with it, except resell it, right? You still have to put in some effort, some creativity, and then use that photograph. And I love those websites and I appreciate those creators so much because they allow me to create art without feeling scared that maybe I'm doing something wrong, feel me? And then the next thing is copyrighted works that are up for public use right now because the artist died like a hundred years after they, no wait, because it's been like 70 years after the original creator of it passed away. I think I'm not 100% sure we would have to look it up and I will, and I'll leave a link down below. I wasn't very prepared for this video, as you can tell. But basically, if that has happened, you can use that work and create derivative work from it. Still guys, don't copy everything exactly the same. You're an artist, you're a creator. Basically, you are creative. That's the whole thing, right? So create with creativity and everything's gonna be great. So now that we've figured out where to get that reference photo, here is one more thing that I want you to know. And that is the mindset with which you're looking for the reference photos. So it is mermaid currently, mermaid, uh, I mean, May. Yes, it's May. 
<laughs> but it is also a mermaid in the art world, meaning people, some people draw mermaids every day during mermaid. And that's so awesome, but I really don't have time to do that. And still every year I try to draw at least one. So a few days ago, I decided to do two paintings, actually I decided to do one. And I had this idea of like a cave and a long mermaid there. I had this idea, I had it envisioned in my mind of how I want it to be. And I spent about two hours looking for photographs and I like got so many, I got like 30 photographs that I was going to put together and mash together in order to create this piece, which is a wonderful way to use references. But then I stumbled upon this photo and it's literally what I wanted. Yeah, of course, not all 100%, I'm not that creative, but it's so, so close to what I wanted. And I knew exactly that I want a mermaid to be there and be long and pretty and oh my God, I found this was the perfect reference. So when I sat down to paint this beast, I bought a pack of brushes that I'll leave a link in the description there from Creative Market. So I was using these two packs of brushes for these paintings and I was so excited and I had found my perfect reference and I knew exactly in my mind what I wanted to look like. It was like every puzzle came together. I love that feeling and I'm sure you've had it already as well. So anyway, I sat down to paint and one and a half hours later, I was done. Like, I mean, done. I loved everything about it. I didn't want to go in more details. I didn't want to smudge anything, mess with anything. I just just thought it was like it just worked out man like it was in my head then it was on my ipad and i was like wow yes this is it so this you guys is the right way to use reference images when you have an idea in your mind and then you look to find tools if you have an idea of some trees you want to paint but you don't know the texture of the trees or the colors you can look it up and find it and you will use that as a tool as an information to put in your painting and that is brilliant i think that is the best way to do it the best mindset to do it and then I was so inspired and so excited of how beautiful this piece turned out. And I loved it. I was like, you know what? I'm going to create another one. It's a mermaid. I'm going to make more mermaids. Did I have an idea? No. I did not have an idea. I was just like, whatever, I'm going to find some rocks. I'm going to find some rocks and I'm going to paint. So I found this photograph and it's, it's a cool photograph. I like it, you know? Um, but then I sat down to paint. I basically copied the background. Then I added some mermaids that didn't turn out pretty at all. It was like weird, three mermaids, so small. It just didn't work. And then I was like, okay, whatever. I'm just going to create the same way, but add a mermaid instead. And I did. And I, you guys, honestly, I don't like it. I don't really like this piece, even though like, I guess it's okay. If I was starting from scratch i would look at this photo reference and i would think about a mermaid then i would crop this photo reference and just focus on the mermaid or something i would do something different to make it better because this was just like like in ukraine we say tap it means like without care like without effort it was just like boom boom done that's it and that's not always good that was basically a waste of time yes i did learn how to paint some water which was really cool always good to practice water but at the end of the day it wasn't such a great result and this is the time lapse for this painting and yes i was having a lot of fun with it and yes uh, some parts of it turned out very well and actually like them but as a complete painting it was sort of a little bit of a failure and that's that is never, never fun. So as you can see, my point is get copyright free photos for your references and use them as a tool. Don't use them as your idea because that is not your idea. I just found a photo and you used it. Have an idea in your mind first, at least a basic idea, and then go look for references. Sometimes you will only need one. Like I was so lucky, just needed one, then I drew the mermaid from my head. But sometimes, you need two references or three or five or 10. Point is they are being used as a tool for your creative outlet, for your creative idea. And this, my friends, is how you use references. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, leave a like, subscribe to my channel for more content like this and hit the notification bell button so you don't miss any of my future videos. Also, if you have any art video ideas of what I should be creating next or any questions or anything at all, 
leave a comment down below and let me know. I would love to hear from you. And as a little sales plug, my patrons are getting the access to the full time lapse for the both paintings, as well as wallpaper and the files so they can explore, turn on layers, turn off layers. Actually, I don't feel jealous of them at all because my layers are a complete mess. So if you're my Patreon and you downloaded a file from me, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They are unnamed, they're all over the place, and most of them are even turned off. So have fun. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching and uh, watch this one next.